Turn on your True Pulse 200X laser rangefinder by pressing the fire button. Press the mode button until you land at BT setup. Press the up or down arrow buttons until on is displayed. Press the fire button to return to active measuring mode with Bluetooth on. From the Joint Pole app's main menu, tap the laser connection icon in the top right corner. Choose your True Pulse rangefinder from the available devices that appear. Tap connect to sync your 200X laser to the app via Bluetooth. The laser icon will turn green once the laser has been successfully synced to the app. Make sure your device's location services are turned on. If using an external GPS, check that it's connected to the device and available. Tap the GPS icon in the top right corner of the app. Enter the height of the antenna off the ground and choose to display your values in degrees, minutes, and seconds if preferred. See the coordinates display, tap close, and the GPS icon will turn green. Tapping the three dots icon brings up help, settings, list values, screen calibration, and about options. Tap list values to customize your project's available choices in the actions, poll conditions, poll construction, poll issues, poll types, poll owners, and telcos categories. For our example, we'll tap telcos. Here we see the current list of options for this category. To add a new option to this list, tap inside the new value text box, type in the new option, and then tap the add button. You can also delete any unneeded options one by one. To do so, tap on an unwanted option to highlight it, then tap the delete button. Confirm by tapping delete once more. Once your list values are ready to go, tap close to return to the joint poll app's main menu. Tap new project. Start filling out your new project information by entering a project name and inspector name. Use drop-down menus to change the default choices for owners. Add a project note if helpful and tap Next. This brings up a blank poll record list. Tap the plus icon in the bottom right corner of the poll record list. Start filling in the poll tab with any relevant street name and cross street information. Use drop-down menus to change the default owners. Enter the poll ID, or if helpful, tap the camera icon to take a picture of the tag. Tap the GPS button and a pop-up will show you the current location and allow you to update the antenna height if needed. If you are occupying the poll's location, tap save. Enter in the pole's circumference at ground level as your size GL value. If you need to record the horizontal distance to the next utility pole, tap the HD to next pole icon and select one shot pole to pole, aim the laser anywhere on the next pole with a clear line of sight, and press the fire button. The joint pole app displays the distance value, and you can tap save to add it to the pole record. Relocate to a position that is about as far away from the pole as it is high. Use this location to finish populating the pole tab with laser measurements. Start with a pole height measurement by first tapping the pole height icon. Shot 1 records a base angle. Aim the laser at the utility pole's base and press the fire button. Shot 2 records horizontal distance. Aim the laser anywhere on the pole with a clear line of sight and press the fire button. Shot 3 records a top angle. Aim the laser at the top of the utility pole and press the fire button. The joint pole app auto-calculates the pole height. Tapping the cancel button wipes away the measurements and returns to the pole tab with pole height left blank. Tapping reshoot will allow you to retake shots if you feel the pole height accuracy can be improved. Tapping save returns you to the pole tab with the pole height value now featured. Next, record the pole's lean value by tapping the lean icon. For best practices, set up at a location that reveals the pole's full lean angling up and away from you so you can record an accurate direction. 
For shot 1, aim the laser at the pole's lowest location where the lean begins, then press the fire button. For shot 2, aim the laser at the highest point where the pole's lean ends, then press the fire button. Joint Pole App auto-calculates the pole's lean and measures the direction with the device's compass. Next up is the Inspection tab. Use the Actions checkboxes to indicate any crucial field work that the utility pole requires. Use the Issues checkboxes to indicate the reasons why this field work is needed. Tap on the Condition drop-down menu to designate whether the pole passes or fails inspection. In the Attachments tab, tap the plus icon to add a new attachment measurement. This prompts you to choose from a menu of measurement options. For our example, we'll start with a fiber attachment height. Tap Comms and then select the fiber option. Default options for owner and span type can be changed if needed by using the drop down menus. For our example, our poll requires the default span type to be changed to dead end. Use the checkbox to indicate if the feature is bundled and do the same if a messenger cable is included. Tap the height icon and follow the graphic prompt to record the attachment's height. Use the reshoot option if you have moved to a new location since your last base angle and horizontal distance were logged. Otherwise, aim your laser where the attachment connects to the pole and press the fire button. The Joint Pole app displays the attachment's height. Choose to reshoot your measurement or tap Save to return to the Attachments tab with your measurement now included. Tap the plus icon to choose another attachment type to add to your list. For this example, we'll tap Drop and select Comms. Use the drop-down menu to choose a different option if the default owner value needs to be changed. We'll change our owner to Xfinity. Tap the height icon and aim your True Pulse rangefinder where the attachment connects to the pole. Press the fire button. Tap Save to add this attachment measurement to your record. Tap the plus icon to add another attachment height. For this example, we'll tap Power and select Primary. Use the drop-down menus to change any default values for owner, span type, conductors, and construction. Aim your laser at the attachment point and press the fire button. Choose to cancel or save this measurement to your attachments list. Continue choosing attachment types and using the app's graphic prompts to record all the necessary heights that your project requires. Mid-span information can be added to any attachment measurement. Follow the attachment's wire as you relocate and set up in front of the span's lowest point. Tap the comms attachment's mid-span button, then tap the save GPS button. This auto-populates the distance to pole data field. Tap the sag height icon and follow the graphic prompts for a two-shot routine. For shot one, aim your laser at the ground below the wire and press the fire button. For shot two, aim your laser at the wire and press the fire button. The Joint Pole app auto-calculates the sag height. Tap Save to add this value to your mid-span record. Next, tap the Line Sag icon. Follow the graphic prompts to perform a two-shot routine. For shot one, aim your laser at the wire's attachment point, then press the fire button. For shot two, aim your laser at the wire's lowest point, then press the fire button. The Joint Pole app auto-calculates the wire's sag value. Tap Save to add this value to the mid-span record, then tap Save once more to add the mid-span record to your list of attachment measurements. Use the Notes tab to include any key observations made during your project. Tap on the Photo tab to add a visual reference to your project. Tap the camera icon and take a picture with the full utility pole in frame. Tap the check mark icon to accept a picture. To enhance the image, tap the three dots icon in the top right corner, select Joint Pole Settings, and check off the Plot Attachment Labels box. 
follow the screen calibration procedure by dragging each plus sign to line up with the four X icons on the screen. Tap Save to proceed back to the photo. Drag the crosshairs to mark the pole's lowest and highest points, then tap the check mark icon. Your attachment measurements will now show up on the picture relatively close to their actual locations. Tapping an attachment label allows you to use the up and down arrow icons to move its position along the pole until you are happy with its new location. Moving the labels in this way does not affect the height values measured by the laser. Tap the left arrow icon in the top left corner of the screen to return to your pull record list. Tap the clipboard icon in the top right corner to access the app's reports screen. Name your report and choose your export file type. If connected to a wireless network, you can email the file directly from the device. If a network is not available, files can be transferred by cable to a PC.